Open up with you brothers. Y'all been studying the book of Galatians. We got a lot of dummies out there, Christians and Israelites alike, who don't understand the book of Galatians. I'm going to read two scriptures. I want y'all to pay attention. You brothers in the middle, pay attention. I want two scriptures. Give me Galatians 2.16. Galatians 2, verse 16. This is what a dummy read to us in Jamaica from one of those dumb Israelite camps. Dumb. No. Go ahead. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Was that the whole verse? Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. That's the whole verse. Now, from there, get me Romans 2.13. Romans 2 verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Wait a minute. I am so confused now. The Bible contradicts itself. No, it don't. When you look at Romans 2.13, right? Read verse 13 again. I, I mean, uh, Officer Leon. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So somebody might ask, how do you know that that's not talking about animal sacrifice? Jump down to verse 21. It's, the chapter explains it to you. Verse 21 to 25. Verse 21. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest not, thou not thyself. Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law, dishonorous? So what law is he talking about? Is he talking about the law of sacrifice in Romans 2, or is he talking about the commandments? The commandments, very good. Go to Galatians 2 now. Where we were at, Galatians 2.16. Galatians 2.16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. So when you examine this verse, he's telling you in order to get um, to be justified in terms of forgiveness, forgiveness of sin. That's what he's talking about. So how do we get forgiveness of sin through Christ? By faith, it's based upon faith, correct? Under Moses, how do we get uh, justified? By sacrifice. Read down. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So the work of the law that did not justify you was sacrifice. Read. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. So what now is he, what is he saying there? If you seek to be justified by Christ, and if you are found, should we be found sinners? What does sin mean? Transgression of the law, breaking God's commandments. Go ahead. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? This goes back to Romans. Hold us, watch this. Give me Romans 6 and 1, Officer Leon. Romans 6. Romans 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound? God forbid. You know why that's important? Because all Christianity says grace, grace, grace. You can be, you can be an adulteress, grace. You could be a homo, grace. Grace, 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 grace. Read it again. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound? Should you continue breaking God's commandments that grace may abound? Let's see what the answer is. God forbid. The answer is no. Go back now to Galatians, where we were at. Galatians 2 and 17. Galatians 2, 17. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? It's saying the same thing. Is Christ therefore the minister of sin? Does Christ teach you to keep breaking the commandments? What's the answer? God forbid. It says God forbid. That's the answer right there. So you had these idiots in Jamaica saying, yes, you don't have to keep the commandments. That's not what that was talking. The verse above was talking about animal sacrifice. You have to learn a distinction. Sometimes he, when Paul writes the law, he's talking about commandments. Sometimes he's talking about animal sacrifice. You have to know the distinction and the difference. Read down. Verse 18. 
For if I build again the things which I had I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. So if you build again the things that you destroy, you might have been a, a lesbian, homosexual, adulteress, liar, thief, pedophile, monthly prognosticator, a witch, a warlock, if I, a liar. If I build again, meaning you do it again, the things which I destroyed, meaning you got rid of those sins, I make myself a transgressor. You make yourself a sinner. That's what he's saying. Can I? So uh, uh, on what the bishop was saying concerning uh, Romans 6, the grace, Titus 2 and 11 real quick. You know what that is, that doctrine of, uh, that they're teaching? Uh, that's a Christian doctrine. That's Christianity with a Hebrew twist. It's Christianity. Grace is supposed to teach us what? Let's read that. Galatians, uh, Titus 2 and 11. Titus 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. That's Christ. That's the grace of God. He sent his son to die for us. Read on. Teaching us that. Wait. wait. Grace is going to teach us to do what? Denying ungodliness. That's what grace is there for. To teach us to deny ungodliness. Read on. And worldly lusts. And worldly lusts. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So what is grace supposed to do? Give you the chance to learn to deny ungodliness, to stop sinning. So that doctrine you hear where uh, the works of the Lord were not justified by the works of the Lord, the reason, and what the bishop was saying, you have to be able to distinguish the reason why they can't distinguish because they have not denied worldly lusts. They have not denied sin, so they, can't un they get tripped up in this. One more point. I want to go back to uh, Galatians 2.16 again. I want to read something to you real quick. Galatians 2.16. This stuff is too hard for This is above their head. Yep. They got to understand simple things like you can't buy on a Sabbath day. If you can't understand that, then certainly you're not going to understand the writings of Paul. So where did the bishop saw from Galatians 2? Verse uh, 16 again. Yeah, let me get there with you. Go ahead. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. Not by the works of the law. Hebrews 6. Watch this real quick. I'll make this quick. Hebrews 6. Remember the word works of the law, right? Hebrews 6 and 1. Hebrews 6 verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again that the foundation of repentance from dead works. You see that word works again? Mm. Read on. And of faith toward God. Now go back up in the, in the verse. Read it from the beginning. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Stop that. Hold this. Go to Galatians. Back to Galatians, where we was reading. I want you to read Galatians 3 now. 3.24. Galatians 3.24. I want you to hold those two places. We're going to flip right back and forth. Read it again. Galatians 3.24. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Hebrews 6 and 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Stop. Galatians 3.24. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Okay, why am I reading those two scriptures together? Does anybody get it? Another word, okay. What's another word for schoolmaster? In school right now, you go to school. Who's the master of the school? The principal. The Bible says the same thing over and over again. So what we read in Galatians 6 and 1, I mean in um, Hebrews 6 and 1, is saying the same thing here. So let's read in Galatians now. Verse 24 again. Wherefore the Lord was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. So the sacrificial law was a schoolmaster that taught us that there must be a blood sacrifice. It was just a shadow of things to come that you read in Hebrews. I don't want to go through it. To lead us to understand that there must come the Messiah to die for us. Do you understand that? Now go back to Hebrews 6 and 1. Hebrews 6 and 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. What was the principal doctrines of Christ? The sacrificial law to teach us that we needed a sacrifice. Do you understand that? Read on. Let us go on unto perfection. The perfection is now through the faith that we had. I'm going to splice it real quick. Uh, don't go to it. John 3, uh, for God so loved the world, right? 
I think verse 14, where he said they raised up the serpent. Why did the serpent heal us? Was it the serpent that actually healed us? No, it was all faith that it would. Why are we made whole? Why are we forgiven? The faith that we had that Christ died for us. So I said, read that in 6 and 1 now. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. What was the dead works? Sacrificial law, because it could never make us perfect. The point being is if anybody's telling you that you can break God's commandments, you can be an adulterer, you can rape, you can sleep with prostitutes, you don't have to keep the commandments in so many words. That is Christianity. That's what we're trying to get away from. And these guys are feeding you Christianity. Do not be foolish. Do you understand that? This is way above their heads. Why? They have not repented to keep the commandments, and the Lord has not given them understanding. Exactly. Get that uh, in Peter's uh, 3.21. 2 Peter 3, verse 15. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you. So Peter's letting you know, before Paul's letters went out, he read them. Peter read and checked out all Paul's letters. That's what y'all need to understand. Why? Because Peter was the chief apostle. Paul didn't run around doing things on his own. He checked with Peter first. There was an order there. Read. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. How do you know they was hard to be understood? Because he read them. He checked it all out before it was distributed through the various cities of Israel. Go ahead. Which they that are unlearned. So Peter now explains to you about Paul's hard letters. He said, those Israelites, which are unlearned, go ahead. And unstable. And unstable, should I sin, should I not sin? I'm not sure what I want to do. I don't know if I'm a man, I'm a woman. I'm sexually confused. Go ahead. Rest. Struggle. The word rest there means wrestle with or struggle with. Go ahead. As they do also the other scriptures. As they do the Old Testament. Go ahead. Unto their own destruction. And all that's to their own destruction. That's to their own destruction. Go ahead. That's it. Go ahead. Oh, ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also. So he says, now that you notice about Paul's letters, I've already warned you. Read it again. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye. Beware. Go ahead. Lest ye also. Lest you too, you Israelites also, who learned in Christ. Go ahead. Being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. So he warns Israel. He said, beware lest you too. You're going to struggle in Paul's letters. And go, we don't got to keep the law. Hey, we could be homos. Yay! You're an idiot. We could be lesbians. What's that? Uh, LG. LGBT. LG, I got to come up with an acronym for that. Larry, Larry Boy George. I got to come up with something. I'm going to think of something. Boy George. <laughs> but Peter warned us about Paul's letters. He warned us. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.